you would think everyone is uh, getting the call to action to pull the lever. But according to a new poll, Latino Americans are being left out of the conversation, despite accounting for nearly 40 percent of the overall increase of eligible voting population in 2020. And beyond reaching out, the political parties also need to do more to understand the Latino community. A new report from Pew offers some very unique insight into the discrimination, discrimination faced by the Latino community and within the community. Now, frankly, we all need a little more intellectual curiosity about our fellow countrymen, and my guests are here to help me break all of that down. Joining me now is Nydea Simone. She's the founder of Black Tina Media, an outlet amplifying and empowering the uh, Afro-Latinx Caribbean narratives, and Mark Hugo Lopez. He's the director of race and ethnicity research at the Pew Research Center. Very happy to have you both. And Mark, because we're talking about your report, I definitely want to kick things off with you. Now, I know there are things like colorism and socioeconomics uh, in many communities of color. Your study shows that a quarter of Latino adults say they have personally experienced discrimination or unfair treatment from other Latinos, including for speaking Spanish in public. What are some of the reasons for that? Uh, well, Latinos who come to the United States bring with them a lot of what happens in Latin America. And in Latin America, there's been a long history of discrimination against people based on skin color, based on race. And that's something that we see among Latinos in the U.S. as well. In our survey, we found particularly it is immigrant Latinos and it is Latinos who are of Puerto Rican origin who are the ones most likely to say that they've experienced discrimination from others uh, who about who are Latinos. But what's interesting is that nearly as many, 31 percent, say that they've also experienced discrimination from non-Latinos. So in total, it's quite interesting that we see Latinos experiencing discrimination from either Latinos or non-Latinos at about the same rate. That's really uh, fascinating. I mean, look, I think a lot of communities of color understand the uh, discrimination that we experience within our communities. Nydia, I want to talk to you, particularly um, as an Afro-Latina. Uh, over 6 million Americans identify as Afro-Latino. They're making up 12 percent of the Latino population. And another study that uh, accompanied Mark Hugo's study that came out of Pew, nearly 30 percent of the respondents who identified as Afro-Latino also identified as white. I found that very interesting. Uh, why might that be? Why might someone who is black ethnically identify as white? That's a great question. Um, and the studies can be a bit confusing. Latinidad is not a race. You can be Asian and Latino, black Latino, white Latino, indigenous Latino. Um, and for the black community, I can speak for us we are usually erased or ignored when it comes to these conversations. Uh, Anti-blackness is everywhere. It's in Puerto Rico, the Dominican Republic, Panama. Kendrick Sampson in 2020 experienced police brutality in Colombia. They yeah. believe he was black. That's all they needed to know. You know, they didn't care that he was American. He was black. So anti-blackness is global. And yes, we do experience anti-blackness from non-black Latinos every day. Um, so I can speak on that. But in terms of the people who are black, who identify as white, um, I would question how black they are. The problem yeah, is a yeah. lot of people are masquerading as black people. Um, and and that, that's unfortunately everywhere. And, you know, I, I should say that the Pew uh, Research Center asked people directly whether they identify as uh, Afro-Latino, which is a different approach than um, other surveys. Uh, the census, for example, um, asked people if they are Hispanic and then in another question whether they are black. Um, so kudos to, to Pew on that, Mark Hugo. Um, something I found really interesting as well in, in this study is Latinos born in Puerto Rico, which is America, um, or in another country, were more likely to experience discrimination from someone else who's also Latino. Why the uh, uh, geographical discrimination, I suppose. It's a little bit about uh, folks who are immigrants and who are others. And you've seen this in the past in, the, in Southern California, for example, where I was growing up. Oftentimes, people would make comments about those who've recently come from Mexico, would call them names um, like, um, like, well, uh, names like Wetback or TJ, um, which were uh, common to, among folks who were U.S. born to say that about somebody who just arrived from Mexico. And this is something that happens in, in Florida as well. Those who are more recent arrivals oftentimes experience discrimination from those who been there been here longer or those who were born in the United States including those from Puerto Rico the Dominican Republic or any of the other nations in Latin America so this is something that's not new it's something that's been it's been around for a while and our survey captured that although again it's tied in many ways to also colorism that is the color of one's skin uh, is associated with discrimination among Latinos darker skinned Latinos experience more discrimination than lighter skinned Latinos 
That's just so, you know, it feels like this happens all across the globe uh, because there are also pockets in the AAPI community where more fair skin um, is considered better. And certainly uh, in, in the black community that sweeps across all uh, ethnicities or many ethnicities, that, that's uh, the case. Nidea, um, something I find very fascinating about the Latino community here in America is it's the largest uh, block of eligible voters uh, in this country, but not registered voters. And a part of that is because I believe the party do not engage Latino voters enough. Um, and we've seen evidence of that. It's certainly happening right here in California, but it's happened in all across in, in different pockets of the nation. Um, what should our representative government do to not only just engage the Latino community, because you're, you know, it's beyond being voters. It's not just a commodity. These are human beings. What could the representative government do to better understand the community itself and the diversity of the community itself? Well, they have to understand we're the same Black people. You know, we're not new. As far as the Afro-Latinx community, we're the same people you've ignored this entire time. Uh, so having documents in Spanish, but also engaging English-speaking Latinos. Most Latinos in the United States are English-speaking and prefer to speak in, you know, the English language. Uh, we are othered in the African-American community. Sometimes uh, they'll say, well, you're not really Black. You know, it's, we yeah. are really, we're this, it's the same people and it's the same strategies that I feel like our politicians have been ignoring. It's community-based, 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 um, give money to the communities, support the communities. Like it's, we've been saying the same things for years. It's not new. We're the same black right. people. It's the, it's, yeah. it's the same, we're the same people. They're not new. Yeah. Yeah, I, I think that's, um, you know, one of the, the biggest benefits of democratizing um, who has a voice in this space. That's why social media has such credo in many communities of color. Um, Mark, a lot of uh, people in the Latino community reported uh, low-level information um, about what either political party is doing. Uh, most did not know much about the American Rescue Plan or BIF, the Bipartisan, uh, bipartisan Infrastructure Law. Um, what does this study reveal about the American body politic and how we engage with the Latino community? It's really interesting. Uh, every time an election rolls around, there's a lot of discussion about Latino voters, and there's a lot of discussion yeah. about outreach to Latino voters. But we found over the years that in our surveys, whether we're talking about 2020, whether we're talking about today, whether we're talking about 2004, that Latinos have often told us they have not heard from campaigns, they have not heard from candidates, and that's partly because of where they live. Many live in states that are not contested states in presidential elections, as an example, California being one of them, which has about a third of all Latinos. Even so, in some places like Florida, Florida, you do see outreach focused on Latinos in a way that's different than in other parts of the country, but there might be some examples about how to reach out to Latinos in a place like Florida, which is diverse, has multiple communities from different origins, and also find, you find that both Republicans and Democrats reach out to both, um, to reach out to Latinos both because they're interested in the Latino vote, their Latino voters in Florida.